So Konami have released two strikers that I really like in this game, but here's why I'm not spinning. If I were to spin, it would definitely be for David Villa. He is actually looking like a pretty good card. You can see he's got above 85 on pretty much every relevant stat. If we take the boost off, is there any stat that's not 85 that's relevant? Curl. Curl's the only one, but he's got the very high kicking power, finishing, dribbling, tie possession, everything. And a lot of top strikers actually don't have high curl in this game. So if you're worried about the low curl, take a look at your other strikers and you'll see that they actually probably have low curl too. So David Villa won't be an issue. But when I compare it to the David Villa that I already have, I feel like the one I'm just going to stick with what I have. If we look at the stats, my one has better dribbling stats, better offensive awareness, same finishing, but similar curls, one less on my old one. Now, speed is the biggest difference. Mine only has 83, whereas the new one has 88 on this build anyway. But then if you look at the other stats, acceleration, yeah, my one's two less, but the kick and power is four more. And I think kick and power is, is really important for uh, strikers. So that's why I think my one's a bit better. And or maybe not better, but just not worth the upgrade. And then the balance, uh, yeah, the new one has plus three balance. So it's not like this uh, Dan Via card isn't good. He'll be a top, top striker. He probably could be better than the one I have, but it's not worth the, uh, you know, 150 euro that you're potentially going to spend. If we look at David Villa's skills, he's got very nice ones. There is a couple that he needs, but a very good start for the card, to be fair. First skill I'd put on is long range shooting, just to make him a little bit better. He's already got the long range curler, the soul control, acrobatic finish and first time shot. Just give him that long range shooting because he's got the good kicking power, you know, good finishing. He'll be a beast at that. After that, he needs passing skills. So one touch pass and true passing is probably what I'd go for. Then I would definitely put outside curler on him. Just look at his uh, weak foot. It's only medium accuracy and he almost never uses it. So definitely put outside curler on this David Villa. And then the last skill, probably gamesmanship or super sub or fighting spirit. You know, super sub if you feel like you have, you know, strikers that are going to start over him. He'll be a very good uh, super sub. And the current version I have, I have him as a super sub. So his goals to game ratio for me isn't great, but he's very important to the team because when he comes off the bench, when you look at how I build him, it's it's you know one one shot. He won't need many. Like you know he he'll get ten chances. You know and he'll score nine of them. So he'll be very good in that. It's just the difficulty is um finding that chance. But he's got good dribbling, good pace, so that shouldn't be an issue either. Next player is Van Bastion, and this is where it becomes a pack that I was interested in, but I'm not gonna spin for. If we look at his build, doesn't look bad at all. He's got a good build. He's got some good skills. He's got the passing ones, importantly. The reason I've done this build is to get the kick and power up. Because, like I was saying with that, via kick and power is too important for a top tier striker not to have. So I have to give it to him. But then the problem with that is, if I compare it to the David Villa that I own, or if I compare it to the Van Bastion that I already own, apologies. You can see that while the new one is a bit better at, you know, pace and passing, the dribbling on my one is a lot better. And I feel like with a type of player like Van Bastion is, you can't be really running at top speed with him anyway. So there's no point having like him being really fast. You want him to be a bit technical. And I was using this card last night just to kind of see what it was like. I haven't used him in a while and he played amazing and scored some good goals in him. So while I think the new Van Bastion will be good in game, I just don't think it's worth the upgrade for me. Now, there are ways to improve his uh, dribbling. You can probably just take off one dexterity. If you have Xabi Alonso, you'll get plus one. Now, the problem is it goes below 84. So you're not getting the plus three boost. So you can't get it to 90 if you want to improve his dribbling. But it's only going to do one point there. And then alternatively, you can take off the speed. I mean, my, my build had 88. Then you can get a good bit into dribbling. You can make his dribbling actually better than the previous version. But look at his kick and power. Like, it's very low. It's got very low curl. So I definitely wouldn't do that. So I would use the build I had before. Just so you can keep that kick and power at the level that you need it at. But his passing is very good. 80 low pass. Or 81 rather. And when you look at his skills, it's uh, good. Because he has already got one touch pass and true passing. Which is probably the first two skills I was going to recommend on him. If he didn't have them. So what would I put on him after that? I'd probably put double touch on. Soul control and long range curler. Probably aerial superiority. Now he's not a player who is actually a good target man. He is very tall, but he doesn't have great jumping. But it's not really for his ability to score headed goals. It's more, you know, if you're trying to play it out the back and you need to hit along, he'll be, uh, he's tall enough that if you give him aerial superiority, he'll be able to win it for the knockdown. And he does have the heading skill. So if he is in the box trying to do a header, he will be a lot better at that. I wouldn't recommend outside curler on Van Bastion just because he has the very high weak foot. So I don't think it's necessary. And again, I'd probably put super sub on him. He's a very good player in terms of his defensive awareness. So the way that works is you get a plus, you get a boost on your stats for super sub. I was sent a document that showed the percentage boost in the old Pez games that super sub used to give, and it used to give a specific boost to uh, offensive awareness. So it used to give about plus nine percent to every stat, and then plus twelve to a certain stats. And one of them was offensive awareness. And I've noticed it myself personally, anytime I have super sub on a player with really high offensive awareness and 
acceleration or speed they always just get on the end of passes and score goals so definitely he would be a good super sub he, but if you know if he's someone who you think is going to be starting for you uh, he is good enough to start so maybe you don't have to put super sub on you could put maybe gamesmanship on instead or a fighting spirit or a rising shot would work really well on van bastion just because he has the very high finishing and kicking power okay next player is Pelo sergio he doesn't look too bad but maybe a little bit one dimensional uh, when leveling up this is the first build i went for if we take off the boosts you can see we're trying to get type possession to 85 for the plus three boost and the finishing also his uh, acceleration and then his speed is already good and the problem is for wingers you kind of want a acceleration to be higher than speed although as a prolific winger maybe the speed might be it might be fine having that higher because most of the pace you're going to want from him is the runs he makes in behind because prolific winger wants to make runs in behind so acceleration won't matter too much for that it's just on the ball he might not feel as quick as you might expect when you compare him to you know other players that are good at dribbling but uh yeah his off the ball runs i have a feeling will be good don't worry about the offensive awareness being not that high because he's so fast when he makes them runs runs in behind he'll be open for the true ball and then also when he gets on the end of that true ball his 100 dribbling will mean he's really fast on the ball so dribbling tells you how fast the player is while having the ball so when he has 100 he'll feel a lot faster than a player with say the same pace or 96 but 90 dribbling so that'll uh he's definitely someone who you're just trying to get in behind with so that's why i've given him the 88 finishing just because you know he might end up in chances where he's one-on-one -on -one with the keeper you need him to uh you need to be confident in him in that position alternatively you could go for more of a crossing build but his loft of pass is too low so i wouldn't recommend it and also he has got decent physical contact so when you play that ball in behind him if the striker is on his side he should be decent at holding them off he won't be too much of an issue if we look at his skills he has got the level three double touch so double touch flip flop and soul control so that's very nice and then he's also got long range curler so with the soul control he'll set up the knock on finesse fine what skills did i put on him i'm thinking probably i know i just talked about how he's not gonna be much of a crosser you want to finish with him but pinpoint crossing would be good because if your opponent is kind of caught on to the fact that you want to cut in and shoot if you have the ability to go outside and hit a pinpoint cross uh, it'll make it a lot more difficult for your opponents to defend after that i'd probably put long range shooting on just because he's already got okay kicking power good finishing so it kind of makes sense just if he's on the edge of the box you know maybe when you're cutting in let's say you beat the fullback and then there's a center back in the middle catching up with you if you have to cut inside you know to get closer to the goal the defender might be there you might want the option to hit it like right at the edge of the box before the defender is cut across so that's why long range shooting might be appropriate you could probably do it with a scissors feint because he wants you know to use his pace so one scissors feint and then he's gone on the wing one on one with the fullback i probably will scissors feint and then gamesmanship too just make that kind of the fact that he's a fast and tricky winger uh better you know you can beat the man and then if your opponent decides or he's close close to you and he hits a tackle you know ref might not call the foul but with games of shift that'll happen more often and then the last skill probably just true passing just to make him a little bit more um well-rounded and you know fit into your team or you could go one touch pass just because if you play it up to him then do a first time pass back to a center mid and then hit the true ball back to him that one touch pass will help although i find for one two passes you don't need one touch passes which i feel like the game kind of locks on the passes a bit better personally if i spun from i wouldn't go for marseille turn but i don't it's not i don't recommend it it's just that i don't use marseille turn very often because i'm on manual feints it's a bit harder uh but marseille turns very good in these wingers if you're dribbling down the wing and the fullback pushes you out wide to the throw uh you know the touchline or throw in basically uh and marseille turn you know when you when you're at that certain angle you can marseille turn around them and then you're in on goal 